something amazing has happened. Uh, SCOTUS has overturned the uh, uh, Louisiana restrictions on access to abortion once again. And Justice Roberts voted with liberals. So people are going to think, oh, my, how is this possible? But I'm interested in your take on this, Joy. Oh, well, I'm, it's, I'm thrilled for America. I mean, it's nice to see that Roberts is not a reactionary uh, like some of the people on the court. He, uh, he goes with precedent a lot. He sees that it's established law already and doesn't want to go crazy. And I mean, you just, the interesting thing is, you know, you just don't know where they're going to, where they're going to go. Look at Gorsuch. I mean, people think, thought he was going to be the biggest reactionary of all of them. And then he voted for gay rights in the workplace. I mean, it, it's, it's kind of fantastic. You never know. It's like I used to work with a guy who I thought was really cute, you know, and very hip. And, and then one right. day he came in with a, he started wearing French berets. And it's like you think you know somebody, and then they show up with a French beret. <laughs> Reminds me of that. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of this, Sonny? Is this, a, is, this a, a, is this a surprise, or did you always know that, you know, most of the time the law is the law? Well, well, absolutely. I, I, I knew that. But Jeff Tubin and I talk about this all the time, as do uh, I, I talk about this with my legal nerd friends. You know, um, when judges get on the bench, they do, especially the Supreme Court, they do surprise you. And I, I think, by and large, many of them don't become these judicial activists that people think that they do. They do respect precedent. And if you read this opinion, that is what Justice Roberts said. He said he didn't think that the Texas law that came before this should have been struck down. So that really is at his core. But he said because it had been struck down, he is going to abide by the precedent in that case. And so that's why he stuck with the majority, the liberals in this case, not because he necessarily believed that the abortion access shouldn't have been restricted, but because it was legal precedent. So he stuck sort of to the, the color of the law. But I think what's really interesting is, will this inure to the benefit of Donald Trump? Will conservatives now be very nervous and, and think, oh my gosh, I've got to vote for Donald Trump now because he's going to put more conservatives on the bench. And I think historically, you know, evangelical um, Christians were sort of that one vote voter, uh, single issue voters. They, they only were anti-abortion voters. Um, I think times have changed. I think you, you'll see a lot of Democrats wanting to just defeat Donald Trump. They are those single issue voters. And I think you're going to find Republicans are those single issue voters. They're thinking about racial equality. They're thinking about the coronavirus. They're thinking about uh, the fact that there were bounties uh, allegedly on our uh, servicemen and women. And Trump did nothing about that. So there are a lot of issues that people care about um, all wrapped up in defeating Donald Trump. And so I don't know that this this decision is necessarily going to inure to the benefit of Donald Trump anymore. Well, I, I just think that it, it, the idea of someone becoming a chief justice turns, turns them in a different way. They are there to interpret the law and sometimes called upon to strengthen or weaken a law. And I think that their idea of what they're doing for the country, not how they feel personally, but what is right for the country. Now, we have, we've had several justices that, you know, just vote through party. But we're seeing maybe that those, you can't depend on who a person you think is conservative being a conservative in the midst of the law, you know. They can personally be that, but not necessarily uh, make the law work for them in that way.